some of that video today because I had to accept that my birthday last year was so cracking it had to count for this year too so cracking you know it had it, like, I, so I it's the overflow that video today <laughs> but too, it was the overflow what birthdays feel like when you're not in the corona you understand when you're not in the corona but that <laughs> thing was it, like Mickey says it was epic, okay? Was. And this year, we live in the overflow. And sometimes, you got to go to church. And what they say is, we live in the overflow. We live in the overflow of the blessings That's it. That's that it. we have been showered we upon. Okay. Last year, which is mm. crazy because you know I was, okay, so anyway, we're talking about my birthday last year. And I themed it out, um, spring break 2020. But we didn't know that this 2020 was going to be this epic. We were calling it 2020 because it was 2019, and I was like, we're going to the future. <laughs> Meet you on the moon. We're going to the future, y'all. So <laughs> spring break 2020, even though it's 2019, yes. they're not ready for us. Was the thought. No. Hi, Monica. And, um, and we, gave, we gave it all we had, didn't we, girl? We gave it all we had. We left it on the field. Woo. There was no, you know, no nothing, nothing left. left. Nothing left. Nothing we left, left it there. And so, and so upon this year, at today, okay, I have to say today was the first birthday ever that I spent totally by myself. And I'm thinking maybe that has to happen at some point in life. Like maybe everybody ends up one time with a birthday. I mean, I haven't really seen any human person today 
and I didn't go anywhere. So I was just here with me. Okay. 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 So you know what we've been practicing. Don't 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 do that was that that was the pet that was the soundtrack for 2019, it wasn't was. it? I was kind of like going from the summer. I know. How yeah. I'm at. So I'm because we live in this attitude of gratitude, let us know what's the one thing that you're grateful for today. Oh, I am absolutely grateful for my friends. Like I think Corona really does kind of take you down to the bare minimum of everything, right? People are down to the bare minimum of our lives. And so when you're not moving around and just mingling with everybody, you got to depend on your core. And I was just super grateful that my core has been so solid during um, the corona and beyond. Before the corona, my crew was solid, but they stayed, they stayed down. And I was thinking mm. that I almost played Golden Girl. Thank you for being a friend. Uh, because it's just been, I think that's my biggest gift of, of, of the entire year. Or the, just having great, great friends and people that I could count on um, to love on me virtually when they couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it's something that I always say. Shamika McCaskill says, um, I am so grateful for my genuine and authentic relationship with I, with oh, I, I love you, Mika me. So beautiful. Just I beautiful. Don't make me drop a tear. That is what happens today. Like, I cried a few times today. But you know I'm mm -hmm. a cry. So this is not, no, don't be alarmed. I get emotional. I think about mm -hmm. things. And the, the things that happened to me today were so considerate and unexpected that they mm -hmm. make you, like, tear up that people would mm -hmm. think about you. For instance, uh -huh. can I give you a for instance? Let me lay it I on. I was not expecting. I, they say expectation mm -hmm. is the master of disappointment. So I didn't have any real expectations for the day, right? Because I haven't mm -hmm. made any plans, whatever. So I wasn't expecting to go down and get a little gift. And Ooh. it was personalized and I'm like well wow what because personalized always means this? so much and then it's not say it ain't it, so it say it ain't so <gasps> wildflower and then it said oh. King Angie so sweet and on it said King Angie it did it said wildflower and then it said King Angie and in the back it said you see things and say why but i dream things that never were and say why not george bernard shaw you know Ooh. this is so considerate my judith sent me this mug that's beautiful it's so considerate from just knowing me enough that you could even say wildflower king and but then she, the quote she knows my dream camps mean so much to me she knows all that and i just yes. it was absolutely unexpected and so sweet and today was about those sweet little things like the people that thought of you and called you you know what i mean it was just every little and i could probably name it but i, I just I, it just meant so much more this year you know and so i it, just had to share this because that's beautiful i mean i love that and you ma'am are now a connoisseur of all things hot liquidy hot and liquidy. i told her i said I said, my friend just bought me this coffee maker. Makes <laughs> one cup at a time, so I can have coffee, tea. But that's a this. beautiful cup. Like, don't be like me, because I don't use my stuff. You know I don't use my I put my stuff up and be yeah, like, I don't, you yeah, use I don't it. Know. Oh, but look, what's in the center of it? Is there something in the center, in the in the cup, on the inside? Oh, no, you no? see a reflection. Oh, okay. It I thought there was like some that. writing in there. But, like, mm. that was super sweet. And, I mean, mm -hmm. I have to also shout out my dad. Okay, you weren't ready for that. You wasn't ready for that. Andre in the house. house. <laughs> Andre is in the house. You know, because my dad, you know, I, I probably haven't been that quiet about the fact that that's been a delicate, you know, relationship. Mm -hmm. But I will say this year, I went to my mailbox and, and, and Andre, that was the first gift in my mailbox. And I was a little shocked. I opened it and I said, whoa, this is like, 
from my dad. And it's not that he had sent the gift. And it's not like he had ever, 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 but it wasn't it wasn't something that I think about or that was consistent or anything. And I just thought it really made me feel the way. And it had nothing to do with what was inside it. It was just you the know, stop. just knowing that you were special enough for him to do it, you know, and ah. and even though you would think that that's, you know, just a given, it's not always. So mm -hmm. because it shout was, out. that's like a birthday shout out. Mm -hmm. and birthday, shout out to Andre. Um, honesty. So I'm like, I had to shout out my dad. Yeah, um, I think it's beautiful. Once again, we're going to file that into the gifts that Corona has given us. Amen. This year, it's like so many things that are monumental yeah. that we would not have necessarily been able to capture or to really, you know, really, you know, relish in the real sentiment of it. But Corona brings it out. It does. That's what I'm saying. Corona it brings it out. anywhere to hide. Your truth. Mm -hmm has to come out. The people that love you are surrounding you. The people that ain't thinking about you ain't calling you. Because, let me tell you what else I noticed. Like, we're not using social media the way we used to, right? Like, I used to mm -hmm. go to bed at, like, midnight and people start being like, happy birthday. I used to get, like, all of this love. And I really didn't this year. Not in that way. And mm -hmm. I, I also thought it was telling, too, because that's how we usually find out whose birthday it is. You know what I mean? This is true. And when this you're not true. using these things like that, people don't know it's your birthday unless I didn't post anything per se today about it. So there were people that I'm sure forgot, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, Corona just doesn't give you anywhere to hide because the mm -mm. people that know you and love you and that stay in touch with you don't, you know, they, don't, they know, they know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know what it is from the start, from the ruta to the tuta. Yeah. And, you know, and that's a little thing. That's about intimacy. You know, not all relationships. When you have intimacy in relationships, it doesn't mean it's a romantic situation at all times. You know what I mean? It means that you are intimately engaged Absolutely. with another individual and they know the 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 special things about you and yes. in your life and the things that you know that most or other people who are not intimately engaged with you um would miss um so that is an awesome thing it's beautiful to have and i always like to say thank god for the friends that became family oh let's talk about the can we talk about the friends that became family wait so wait it's so funny. So the reason we were a little late, let me go back a little bit. The reason we were a little late is because another friend that became family had called me right at the time I should have been getting ready for the kiki. And we had to kiki. And then that friend, Android, was like, let me buy you dinner. So she, she just, the delivery, she said, but I think they at the front desk. <laughs> So I get it after the kiki, I think. But she brought me dinner, which, I mean, she and she's in L.A., you know? So, like, that was totally sweet to just, it was the little things today, you know, talking to her and her being like, let me get your dinner. And earlier, I had brunch. Is this what we're supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to be talking about No, we're going we gonna, to we gonna get to the next thing. I want to hear about your brunch, though. This is your day, boo. We want to hear about your brunch. Let's hear the brunch, the and then we're going to get into the next thing. Me, I go in when I want to go in, and I step out when I need to. But mm -hmm. I went in. And there's a place around here called Tops, which I generally like for, like, birthday breakfast. And I like it, too. Because I got you there on your birthday. So but I generally do the chicken and the waffles. But today, I said, let's do it different. I did the catfish and waffles. Ah! Okay. Okay. You switched it up on them on your birthday, girl. You switch that thing up. <laughs> You switched it up on your birthday. Shabika you said, oh, up. birthday you girl flow, you got to switch it up when you can. <laughs> so that was awesome. But my friend Matthew, he heard that I was having chicken and waffles. And I looked up and Matthew was like, this is for chicken and waffles. So he bought my brunch. <laughs> and it's those little things. I'm so happy I can tell y'all this because even though I was here physically by myself, I was not alone in the world. And so when you ask what I'm thankful for, 
is for the friends that become family. Because I think only family was around for Corona this year. You know, and thank yeah. God for them and the small moments, the big moments. Yes. We know, yes. I, know I, didn't, I didn't have time to debut my, you know. No, my no, hold it. You just hold on to that, just Wildflower. Okay. We know how you like to do it. You hold on to that. Okay. I wasn't ready, but it's coming. Mm -mm. I, I did for my birthday. I really mm -mm. wanted to redecorate my space. And so one of my best friends been helping mm -hmm. me all week turn my place into my dream vision of what I wanted my apartment yeah. to look like. And I'm super excited. Yeah. We went in in wildflower fashion. <laughs> so... Super excited. So that's another thing I'm grateful for. Alex been down like 10 flat tires. Well, not even four. We going diesel truck, trailer truck, 10 flats. Okay, I like Ten it. Of them. You know, ain't, Ten. If you don't have a friend like that, then I I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but my friend ain't one. Okay. He had my back in ways that made me feel so loved and so safe. And that's friendly love. That's that's family love. That's somebody that cares yes. about you in the world. Yes. In healthy ways. I, I, I love to say okay. that is not that. Yes. I love to say I got the best seat in the house. <laughs> yes. I love who, I, who he is to me. And he is just a great friend. Did you hear the doorbell ring? Was that your doorbell? That's my doorbell. But I think it's my dinner. So talk to the people okay let me talk to the people because i need to and i feel some people out there talking about team alex we love us some team alex around these parts okay we call ourselves the do too much crew and alex is a part of that do too much crew and i'm sure he's going to join us here tonight because all of our people are here tonight and the thing we're talking about tonight is freaky uh, frightening facts about relationships <laughs> sex and sparring right so one of the first things we're going to talk about is that the is that from um uh, alex is here yay okay so i'm gonna hurry up because we we've been in a way some time we got a trip around the world to do so we're gonna do this okay but one of the things we were talking about is intimacy with friends and things such as that and one of the psychological facts that we found out was that they say that when you get in a relationship you might lose two of your friends mm. because of your new relationship. Ooh, that and that's not true. Will you lose the friends? Huh? Do you lose your friends? I can't imagine losing my friends at this point in life because of my love interest. I can't. No, you think? I think it's true because there's always somebody who it always come on. You know that there's always some type of tension. At the altar, you don't like him. They I don't. Somebody done said something, and then all of a sudden, people start feeling real territorial. Like if you say that about my husband, then you ain't my friend. Mm -hmm. You know, now you, people well, you right about that. Having aren't friends now because weddings. Well, I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know. <laughs> ah. But my homies, I would never let my homies go because of a. I mean, because what are you going to do? I just never, like, our relationship, Angie, my relationship with you, I just could never let that go because of, if that's, my happiness relies on my friendship, my connection, my family, my sisterhood with you. And if you don't want to feed into that, we ain't got much to talk about. No, but sir. you know what? I agree, and we know that. And I think there's levels to certain friendships, right? I think ours is too deep. It's like, you ain't got to like her, but she's going to be here. So what we going to do? <laughs> you know what? When you got married, I told your husband, I said, uh, I come with the package. <laughs> wait, wait. When I got married the I second time, Angie this said, my, my mom is old school. This is what you get when you get Angie. My mom was old school, and, and my mom, I guess she was like, she getting married. I've been divorced, and I'm married again for the last time, okay? But Angie was like, yes, Miss Wells, and I'll be here for the third time, too. <laughs> it don't matter. We're going to do it all again if we got to. Miss Wells Boom. said she will not coming no more. She said, this is my last <laughs> one. <laughs> I said, well, Miss Wells. Angie was like, let me 
tell you. Straight out, I looked her like, yes, Miss Wells, I'll be here for the third one, fourth, or fifth. Miss Don't Wells, matter. I'll be here for the third one. <laughs> if I needed to, shout out Mike. If I needed to, though. He ain't going nowhere. He He's right back nowhere. there. Shout out Mo. He but, ain't going I mean, nowhere. I do think people lose friends. And there are some friends that can't take it. Now, we don't really okay. deal with that a lot. But some friends want to be married so bad or they want somebody so bad they're a little um, intimidated or, you know, a little jelly bean at a, a relationship. This is true. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to bring Alex in here. And I Alex want you... We're gonna bring Alex in, and then you're gonna see in your in your in the timeline. You just call the next person and what make timeline? sure you look because just in the chat to see who else is here. We got Adrian here. We got Shamika here. We got Mickey. We got Fiona. We got and Alicia. And so just we, we're gonna talk about frightening facts, okay? Wait, what am I asking them? We they're gonna talk about the frightening facts, and you're gonna talk with them. They got their frightening facts. What kind of facts? Frightening facts frightening about facts relationships. About love. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. I'm jumping out, and Alex is jumping in. Okay. So I'll be yes, here. Uh -oh. and Hi, Uncle Drew. The real Uncle Drew is here. Oh, my goodness. You know, he always <laughs> got something to say. He said, our husband's obsolete in the 21st century. Oh, oh the real God. Uncle Drew. What's the point of a husband? He's so crazy. The real Uncle Drew, I love you. Okay, I'm getting out here. Okay. Alex, come on in. Okay. So if y'all know me, I'm always trying something. So she sent me this. Um, what we having? We having sushi. So I tried this uh, Japanese soda because I'm always trying something. And then I won't even like it. But <laughs> to know me is to love me. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> We're bringing in the man of the hour. The champ is here. Okay. His signal is slow. So that means I'm out here on the limb. It says waiting for Alex Gibbs. So we are talking about tonight, though. I'm going to keep this going because my partner did not play. We are talking about frightening facts about love. And... We do know that love can be scary, scary, because somebody's bound to get hurt. You know, all's fair in love and war. Okay, Alex said, yo, but it just says waiting for Alex Gibbs. It's not letting you in, friend, friend. Um, hi, Larry. Um, it's not letting you in, friend, friend. I don't know. Let's try again. So... Um, thank you, Android. This is so surreal. I told somebody recently, I was like, oh, my God, it's like my life is, um, I don't know what in it. Oh, my God, it ain't let me let nobody in, y'all. Look at the, look at the devil. <laughs> Add it again. Let's see. So, I don't know. I got no clue. And I know Charla doesn't love technical difficulties, but we're having some. It's not letting me bring anyone in. So now what should I do? I'm going to tell y'all about frightening love things until this lets us come in. But, okay, wait. Okay, Alex. We're going to try it again. I don't know. We're having a tough day. This day just wants to do whatever it wants to do. I got nothing. <laughs> oh, Chad. Well, I don't know what to do, but no one can come in right now. It's not letting anything in. So if you guys want to ask any questions, I definitely know some frightening things about love. And I think one of the frightening things about love is trying to love again after you've been hurt. And I think that's one of the big reasons why, hi T, I think that's one of the big reasons why people shy away from love because you found out when you got out on that limb that sometimes that limb breaks. And there you are holding on like a little kitty. And you know, that's not always easy. So I think that's one of the most frightening things for me with uh love 
I see you, Charlotte, with your request, but I it could be my phone. It could be a lot of things. I've been waiting on the 12, guys. <laughs> Anybody else out there waiting on the 12? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to wait till the 12 come out. And the 12 came out so late that, uh, when was your first love? Thank you, uh, Android. Oh, okay. Are we really going there? I'm in the hot seat. My first love, I think my first true love, 10th grade, Chris Wings. We saying names? Um, Everybody knew it at school. That was my first love. And that love hurt. That love hurt. And I think I learned early on that love would hurt, that you could have somebody that was like an amazing person and they could still hurt you. And so that was 15. That was my first date. I got to, my mama let me, I, well, I was supposed to not be able to date till 16, but she, she let me date at 15. I think I begged her real hard. Um, anybody else have other questions? I don't know why this ain't working. Um, so that was my first love. And I think you know it's your first love when it hurts. Because how would you, somebody said, yes, names, all the names. Um, how would you know it was love? To me, it's when it hurts. That thing hurt so bad when it was over. And that was the first time I had ever felt anything like that. You know, something that brought me to tears in a way that I felt bad for my mama. Because I was crying like that. <laughs> like your gut yeah just ask me questions y'all was that and my gut was hurting my soul cried out I was just, ah! <laughs> and I know my mama can hear it but I couldn't stop it so that was like totally the first time around in the love game and it didn't never get no easier it really did not for me I don't know how that kept happening but it didn't get any easier. People at the same level of attractiveness are more likely to end up together. Um, <laughs> Brunel's so stupid. She said, can you tell the whole story? <laughs> She's probably there. What's up, Brunel? Um, I do think that people that are at the same attractiveness, they generally, you know, are drawn to each other. Um, I think what I learned from that situation, you can't judge books by their cover. And he was the all-American all-star going to Stanford, doing all the great things. And people are just human. And that shout out to him for being my first love. No, all love. But you realize people were just human. So then I switched. Ooh, when did you first experience unconditional love? Ooh. Hmm. Unconditional love. Y'all on the main read. Let me see. I think. I don't think I've experienced that with a man yet. I think my unconditional loves have been friendships. And um, those have been the safe places for me where I thought, like, I'm safe here. Everybody else, everybody else, from that first one to the last one, didn't, didn't make me feel safe. Don't mean we didn't have a good time. It means I'm not sure I can trust you. I'm not sure what you're doing behind my back. Such and such said this. It was, it is. And that has been an unfortunate uh, pattern. Uh oh, the SOG. What's up, Jerry? Um, but I've been so loved in my life. I don't think I noticed that till later. My love was coming from my family, my friends. You know, my confidence, my support was coming from my family and friends. And the the men that I was choosing, I think, you know, were, uh, I think you showed it today with your dad. Oh, wow, that was great. And I guess that is true. You know, that's the maturity stepping in and you're like, um, let's, let's do this thing now. Let's do it, you know, now. So life is interesting, interesting. I don't know how I kept running into a series of facts. Well, they say, Charlotte probably got a fact for us. They say that um, that you, you know, you end up repeating patterns probably. So a lot of that were the people that I was choosing and the people that I was drawn to, um, you know. So, you know, I got to live up to that. What's your theme for your next journey around the sun? 
See, that's a friend. What I mean, y'all know I do things. I do. <laughs> I do do things. Um, and I was thinking this next time around the sun, I'm just, right now, I'm going higher. Last year, I was like King Angie. I told somebody that. I, I crowned myself King Angie, right? And I was just playing, y'all. I was just playing. Alex, you can't FaceTime me in the middle of the thing. <laughs> that called myself King Angie. and But it was really about, I grabbed my confidence and I didn't let it go. You know, and I had apologized for my confidence so long. I didn't even understand it. Some of this Cardelia just planted in there and I came out that way. And I had tried to play small when I could. And it's just something about last year, I grabbed that thing and I was like, I'm not letting go of it. And it served me all year. I've had an amazing year believing in myself, um, being cool enough to crown myself king of my world. I know I ain't got the most. I, this, this was not a matter of, this was about understanding who I was and, and being proud of who I had become. So as I move through that, you know, taking my confidence further, I'm going higher. I'm going next level. You know, we we doing LLCs and we are, you know, we going in for the big roles. We're going for it fearlessly. Somebody asked me, um, somebody asked me what shifted in me. And I said, I stopped needing outside approval. I was okay with whatever I was going to post, whether y'all liked it or not. I'm okay with what I wear, whether anybody compliment me or not. I'm okay with what I'm doing, whether you celebrate me or not, because I, you know, I'm not doing it for anyone else but God and me and what I can give back to the world. And out of that, I started, I started moving mountains out of my way. I started moving obstacles that had been in my way that I couldn't understand. And I wanted somebody from the outside to explain it. Why is this hard for me? Why are they doing that? Why that? I was constantly asking questions from people that couldn't give me the answer. But when King Angie stepped in and I just decided that I was going to be comfortable in the skin I'm in, I started moving that way. So the meetings I were having were different. They were direct. They were clear. They were to the point. The conversations I had were different. I was my authentic self and at all times. And it's not like I think I was ever like being fake, but there are times when you're afraid to show your full self, right? There are times when you're like, mm-hmm, yeah, you know, or you want, I, I, I wanted to be nice all the time. And nobody's nice all the time, <laughs> but I wanted to be. And that would put me in these positions where sometimes I was quiet when I didn't know what to say. or they, And then it just, I stopped. So um, this next time, I'm going higher, y'all. I'm, 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 I fear less. I fear a lot of things less. And that's giving me so much strength. So um, these questions are fun. I didn't expect this to go this way. I'm going to see if my, my button is not working. I keep hearing somebody say liberty. Uh-oh, see, now I done pushed too many buttons. Liberty, yes, freedom. Oh, y'all see that? I'm shining, shining. Can y'all see that or just me? I press the button and I don't know what it is, but I like it. Um, liberty and freedom. And I always say your truth will set you free. And your truth is hard to make peace with sometimes because you don't know how other people receive it. But once you receive it, it just is what it is. And the people that love you, love you as is. And <clears throat> the people that love you, show you yourself too, the good parts and the bad parts. And that's constantly giving you a chance to... Um, to see yourself so um let me see any more questions i'm glad y'all hanging with me i hope my answers are interesting look and this is what this day was somebody people kept saying what are you gonna do and i kept saying i'm just letting the day unfold we had a whole thing planned it seemed like people were coming in and my button stuck so i don't know if it's them or me but it ain't working so we rolling with the flow um so what else did y'all ask? Let me see. I did. I had a really great year. And um, when I started out the year, I made a promise. Well, I made a declaration. I said, I'm going to make a million dollars. Charlotte, no, because Charlotte was there. 
I said, I'm wearing my green dress. I'm wearing money green. And anybody that asked, that was my, I'm making a million dollars this year. I did not know how. I just was putting it in the universe. I had been reading The Secret. I had been watching. I was dealing with my faith, believing in the things that were possible, things that are not seen. And I said, I'm going to get my uh, million dollars. And wait, somebody's giving me. So I changed the way, I, but I knew what that meant. I had to change the way I was moving, the way I looked at things. I had to get some fear out of my way. I had to go and knock on some doors with some intention and not take no for an answer. And I started getting the yeses that I needed. And I know the year ain't up and I didn't make my million dollars. But what I did was I think I planted some million dollar ideas. And I think when you shoot for the moon, you reach the stars, you know? And so I'm proud of what the year was able to unfold because I was very intentional about what I was going to do and what I wanted to do. And um, so it's been blessed. And then some things popped up that I didn't expect, you know? A lot of those intentions were heavily on acting and, you know, I got new agents. Shout out to my agents that I love, okay? I love my new agents. Because I'm going to tell you why I love my new agents. Because they saw me. But I'm going to tell you why I love that. I showed them myself. That, that's nobody's fault that my last situation didn't know me because I hadn't shown them my full self. But what I did for this is when I got to the table, I was so honest. And I, I said, this is me. And I know this doesn't work unless you know me. And out of that, not only did they sign me, I booked two TV shows that week. Unheard of, unprecedented in my life, okay? It was, and I, you know, I booked two TV shows, but I was getting, like, callbacks from Premier Theater just calling my agents, like, she killed this audition. We can't hire her. She looked too young. Shout out. That's what they said. It's my birthday. I'm just celebrating. But we loved what she did, and it was just all this outside confirmation that I know that they knew me. So now the roles I'm getting to go in for are different. They can see that, yeah, I can do that, but I can do that too. And I think the people that know me know that I'm very layered. Probably whatever you think you see, there's something else going on. So um, that is um, that is really when the year started shifting because I started seeing supernatural things happen. I, I, I would call that a miracle. It was a miracle to me that I had got with these agents and they're great agents for me. And it was a miracle that I had booked these two TV shows, great roles on two great TV shows. Like, wow. And I think that just set me up that I knew nothing was impossible. I was <laughs> doing the impossible. Because, I, I mean, I'm talking and I'm, I hope y'all know I'm playing, I'm having fun, but I, my friends know the tears that have been crying. You know, they know the fear that was there because I was having to, like, commit to, like, okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get what I came for. And um, that just meant I had to shift the way I was moving in certain areas, and it paid off, and it paid off. This is fun. Shout out Dream Camp. And so I didn't even get to that. Dream Camps now might make me cry because it's my baby. In dream camps, oh, I'm glad I got my glasses on because now I'm crying. Dream camps ended up being accumulation of everything that I loved. I've always been working with kids. And when people knew it or not, you know, I, was, I would put stuff in a backpack and I would take about three trains to get to Queens Library. And I would work with kids in after school programs. I was doing motivational speaking. I was working on ideas I had for kids, content. I want to, you know, write TV for kids. I just had a passion for kids always. And shout out, there are kids that know me from Kansas City as Miss Angie at the Boys and Girls Club. There are kids that know me as Miss Angie in LA at Celerity, uh, at Celerity Charter School. There are kids that know me, you know, <laughs> in another part of L.A. And then kids that know me here in New York. You know, I was working with kids. It was just a calling in my life. And so then the COVID came. 
And that was really a reflection of what do I have? Because remember I said I was going to make a million dollars. So I still had my goals. I didn't give COVID my goals. I didn't give up and say, oh, well, now this year's out. I'm like, okay, this unemployment, that's, that ain't going to cut it. That ain't, the, that ain't the path to a million dollars. I got to keep thinking. I got to keep dreaming. And so Dream Camps was born. It was just an idea I had. I knew I wanted to do some online uh, classes for kids, but because of the way my mind works, I wanted them fun. I wanted them inspiring. I wanted music. I wanted everything that I would have wanted as a kid. You know, and I like learning to be fun. So I wanted to make Dream Camps fun but special. And it's just one of those ideas you birth that become like your calling and you almost feel like you were created to do that. And God God put it in the palm of his hand so many times that you knew he wanted it to happen because it could have fell apart. My friends know that too. They know I was crying about that. <laughs> this ain't working until it did. So Dream Camp shout out. That's my baby that is supporting me. So I, it's, it's, it is, it, my, the biggest part of it is I love people. And I did dream camps because I started looking at the truth of our situation as artists. We didn't have any work. And who who cares about the poet? Who cares about the DJ? Who cares about, you know, you know, and I'm not talking about everybody that's eating off the top. I'm talking about there's a lot of us that are eating off that day-to-day -day work, you know. Um, and so it was a beautiful thing for me to be able to help artists and help kids you know, to get to pour into them as they were able to pour into these artists. So I'm all about that. I'm all about that project being a blessing to as many kids as it can and to as many artists as it can, a financial blessing. And uh, so I'm just really proud of it. Y'all want to ask me some more questions? I'm sorry. I'm just talking. I don't even know if it's interesting. Um, But I, that's, let me see if my requests are working now. So that that's if you see Dream Camps, that's what it is. I I pair professional, and I love to tell people I'm not selling celebrity. I talk, I, I'm selling professionals, professional artists that love what they do, that are willing in this time while they have the time to pour into the artists of tomorrow. So that let me understand, like, wow, I can affect the way they see this thing. I can inspire them from a different perspective i can give them what i wish i had a safe place to be heard understood supported so these professional artists from broadway tv film and behind stage and music come and they give their all and they're such great classes they're such inspiring classes because i tell the teachers i want you to teach the class of your dreams so this also isn't like some textbook heavy um opportunity for them it's for them to sit back and say what did Little Angie needed 12. So what, what lesson can I teach you that's going to help you go further? And that's what I love about Dream Camps. No camp is the same. And uh, while the teachers are giving fundamentals, fundamentals, they're also giving life lessons and heart lessons. And um, it's a beautiful thing. I learn so much each week. So um, anybody else, y'all? I'm sorry. Ange, log out and log back on. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave out. <laughs> moments were crazy and my moments are over <laughs> I'm gonna try to come back in